Time now is 5.30. We all rise to call the Leesburg City Commission meeting to order. Honorable Gas Director Jack Rogers will lead in prayer tonight, followed by the Pledge of wow, Allegiance to the thank flag. You. <laughs> uh, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for today, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your many blessings, Father. And so, Lord, uh, tonight we're just asking you just to invade this space, to watch over everything that is done here today, to give us the, the words to speak and the wisdom to decide. Uh, we pray for all of our first responders, our military, and for all of our government officials uh, throughout this land, Father. And we just invite you to be a part of uh, every part of this uh, proceeding tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rogers. We have no proclamations tonight. Um, three is our presentations. We're going to allow the city manager to come and make our present recognition of our service awards for five years, 15 years, 20 years, and 30 years. So uh, Melissa Ariega, our HR director, is going to read off everybody's name. You guys come up. I'll give you your certificates, and then Pam's going to take a picture of us. So we'll, and we'll do it by years of service. Yes. So we'll bring up five, 10, 15, 20, and, and a third. Good evening, commissioners. So we are presenting service awards this evening to I don't believe our officer Gary Herrero has made it here yet. Thank you. So we have Deputy City Manager Michael Rankin, five years of service with us. Lisa, Lisa Robinson, customer service. She works in customer service for the last five years with our admin. Melissa St. Louis Curry, she currently works as a library use services supervisor at the library. That's it. So Pam's going to get it. <laughs> Next, we have Mr. Jeremy Prevat. Jeremy has been with the city for 15 years. He serves as a solid waste operator. Thanks. And our 20 year award, Alana. There she is. <laughs> there you go. Alana has been with <laughs> She serves as an evidence technician in the police department. She's been with us for 20 years. Wow. I was nine when I started. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. So we're honoring Andrew Tim Allen, 30 years of service with the city. He currently works in our gas department. I'll get on this side so they see you. <laughs> <laughs> And now Michael Thompson has been with the city for 30 years. He works in our recreation department. Michael does a bunch of stuff too for the Leesburg Lightning. So when Mr. Johnson found out, he also wanted to make a special recognition for him. Thank you. We're gonna do both. Michael, the Leesburg Lightning acknowledges with gratitude your exemplary efforts on behalf of the city of Leesburg as a head groundskeeper for Pat Thomas Stadium, Buddy Low Field. Through your tireless efforts, you have assured 
that the stadium and the field set the example throughout the Florida Collegiate Summer League. We appreciate it greatly. Thanks so much for being who you are. employees for their years of service and, and dedication to their family who supports them. Yes, that's good. I was like, what, what, do, what do we do? Bless <laughs> all the cars. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. All right, item four is our consent agenda where routine items are placed on the consent agenda to expedite the meeting. If the commission staff wish to discuss any item, the procedures as follows. Pull the items from the consent agenda, vote the remaining items one roll call vote, and discuss each item pull and vote by roll call. Are there any items that the commission would like to staff like to pull tonight? Nothing tonight, thank you. Nothing for me, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Nothing. Can we entertain a motion? Move to approve. Second. Second. Probably move to second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Commissioner Robot? Yes. Commissioner Hurley? Yes. Commissioner Dennison? Yes. Mayor Christian? Yes. Before we do 5A, we have to announce that this is a public hearing to discuss the fire protection service assessment. Does anyone from the public want to speak at this time? If not, 5A is a resolution. Would someone like to introduce it? I'll introduce it. Ask me right back, Todd Lone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Leesburg, Florida, relating to the provision of fire protection services, facilities, and programs in the City of Leesburg, Florida, imposing fire protection assessments against assessed property located within the City for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2019, approving the rate of assessment, approving the assessment role, and providing for an effective date. A motion. Move for approval. I'll second that. Move to a proper second. Any discussion from the commission? From the public? Roll call, please. Commissioner Robot? No. Commissioner Hurley? Uh, yes. Commissioner Dennison? Yes. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Mayor Christian? Yes. Item 5B is a resolution appointing two library advisory members. Someone would like to introduce it, please? I'll introduce an SB read by title only, please. <clears throat> Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Leesburg, Florida, appointing two library advisory board members, one to an unexpired term ending September 30th, 2021, and one to a five-year term ending September 30th, 2024, and providing an effective date. Move for approval. Do we want to hear from you? Yeah, you got it. Definitely, yeah. Okay, Ms. Luce, I see you standing up. You, wanna, you know in the individuals that you can introduce them to us tonight? Yes, Mr. Mayor, Lucy Gangoni, Library Director. We have four candidates, two candidates are with us tonight. Uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Reimer and Ms. Dinah, uh, excuse me, Dr. Dinah Main. Um, they're both prepared to say a few words. Okay, would commission like to hear from those two? Yes, please. Yes, can you, yes, um, can you two ladies please come and just introduce us, tell us kind of why you want to be on the Library Advisory Board, please. My name is Liz Reimer, and I have lived in uh, Legacy of Leesburg for three years. And uh, I have, ever since I was a young child, um, my parents instilled in me um, reading, and I have been involved with public libraries ever since. I worked in a public library when I was in high school, and I worked uh, three of my four years in the campus library when I was in college. Um, ever since I moved to uh, Leesburg. I have had a library card. I am a regular patron. I'm probably at the library about two or three times a week and I have attended many of the programs there and I lived in Houston, Texas before I moved here and I have to say that this library is far and above any library that I ever went to in Houston. This is, I think this is one of Leesburg's best assets that they have. This is truly an amazing place. They have wonderful personnel. They have wonderful programs. 
And I would like to give back a little bit to Leesburg, and I feel like this would be a way that I could provide um, some community service to the community. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Um, my, I'm uh, Dr. Dina Main. Um, I come here from Jasper, Florida. Um, I've only been here, my husband and I, for a year. Um, we live in Arlington Ridge, and the reason why I would really like to be on the library board is because um, I got a lot from the library. Um, I have a bachelor's, a master's, and a PhD, and I spent numerous hours in the library researching. Um, I have worked with the library. I've been, um, I've been helping and reshelving. Um, doing those kinds of things, but mostly it's been as a teacher also. I teach, or I did teach, excuse me, I've retired, uh, chemistry and physics, physical science, and in high school, <coughs> and believe me, you need a library for that. You need to know what's there, what the students can research, and how to use it, and so I relied much uh, on the librarians and on the librarians' assistants and doing a lot of work for them. I admire that. I would also like to give back to the library. I am a member of the library here. I have my library card and have been to one of the functions here. And it is a beautiful library. It's a wonderful asset to the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, commissioners, we have four applications. Two people showed up. So. <laughs> I, mean, I vote for the two that showed up. Exactly. Okay. I vote for those two as well. I think we have to decide which is going to be the replacement and which is going to have a four-year term. But um, I think these are two outstanding nominees for this. Okay. You have a recommendation? Um, Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Liz, are you willing to take the expiring term to 2020 and then come back in and take a full term you would prefer the long one and okay I think we should do it then Okay. And about disagree about what? Okay. As long as the women in the room are. Happy. <laughs> 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 I am on board, man. I'm on board. And oh, okay. I think you got unanimous support. How well you did. <laughs> See them. Okay. It was all about experience from the last meeting. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so now, will you make a motion for that resolution? I move that we name. Excuse me. I can't see the printing. We name uh, Dr. Maine to fill the expiring term in 2020 and Miss L Mrs. Liz Reimer to take the four-year term of the uh, nominees. I have a second to that? Yeah, it just, just no, it's a, a five-year term in 2021. Oh, okay. According to this, at least. I actually don't yes. know that. I'm just yeah, reading. No, no you're right. So I wasn't reading fast. Just so, no, yeah. the, so it's the, the 2021 for Dr. Main <laughs> <laughs> and a five-year term for Liz Reimer. And we do have a second. Yes, and a discussion from the commission, from the public. Do we need to, um, you need to read it? Or? No, we're good. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Hurley? Yes. Commissioner Dennison? Yes. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Commissioner Roebuck? Yes. Mayor Christian? Yes. Item 5 says a resolution. Would someone like to introduce it, please? Excuse me. Congratulations, ladies. <laughs> I'll uh, introduce and ask to be read by title only, please. Thank you. Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Leesburg, Florida, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a land purchase contract for 1315 West Main Street and providing an effective date. Move for approval. Well, I would like staff to give us a, a, a kind of why we're doing this and kind of um, goes against the norm what we've been doing in the past. So, uh, Al, if you kind of update us. I will. Uh, from a from a staff position, you know, I think we're we're pretty sensitive to to where the commission is at um, in terms of trying to get the most value for properties that have liens on it. Um, I do think from time to time there's some issues that pop up that may uh, need to come to your attention for consideration. And if if you so deem that the 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 SOP standard operating procedure is going to be not to release liens then 
you will henceforth not see these recommendations from staff any longer. However, like I said, there are a couple of instances I think that do come up that warrant your, your attention. Um, this is one of them. Um, the lot in hand from a city's perspective is on West Main. Um, it's very near the um, entryways and it's been problematic for some time. Um, that makes it interesting. It, I, I, locally it's known as the pink house. I think everybody knows the one we're talking about. Um, it, it's near the mobile station. I, it, long story short, it, it's, uh, you know, it's been a problem and it's in a position in the city where I think we can benefit from that. A while back we brought a presentation to the commission. I guess it's been has it been two years ago when we when we offered a quid pro quo to acquire that property to build a parking lot? Uh, at that time, the commission didn't want to do that, which was fine. But this is this is good. This is good property and it has a city interest. The second thing, and, and I'll defer to Fred on this, so he can put it into legal vernacular. But there, this 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 property's been in and out of foreclosure a couple of different times. Um, it got to a point to where the owners of the property have paid the city about $900 a month for three years in a foreclosure interest or and well we had a pending foreclosure on it three years ago and on the morning of the foreclosure sale when I expected the city would buy the property or some third party would uh, Mr. Jacobson filed chapter 13 bankruptcy which put a halt to the sale and he had a bankruptcy plan approved in chapter 13 you repay your creditors over a period of five years and his plan said he would pay the city nine hundred and seventy six dollars a month and some change which he has done faithfully for three years and it he never did put any money into the house to bring it up to code so we started another foreclosure case on it and Mr. Bone represents him and came to the city with this proposal. Uh, they have the ability to defend or delay the foreclosure somewhat and run up the tab on that. Uh, so it seemed like a good idea to propose this to the commission and the money that you're talking about is essentially giving them back the money he's paid the city over three years. So it's a net wash from the city's financial perspective. Uh, he's paid in about 36000 I think he would get 35000 out of it. And the city gets the property. We can drop the foreclosure uh, subject to the special magistrate's approval. The fines are canceled. He can stop paying that money now. Uh, and everything is wrapped up. The city can either fix the place up and sell it or demolish it as you wish. But the eyesore will go away one way or the other. So, so there, you know, there, I think that therein lies the three issues that make this a little bit different: the the, the foreclosure that was in the bankruptcy, where what, by the petitioners already paid the city, and it's a recoup of those funds for him, a net neutral for us. We keep uh, an important property, a property that's really in a continuing state of disrepair, um, and uh, that code enforcement situation here isn't riveting benefit because we're still levying fines and we're getting a payment on a foreclosure issue. So it's in kind of in a lose-lose circle here whereby it's really not going to get fixed. And the city has an interest in the property. So I think those things warrant your, your, your discussion. And if you go a different direction, certainly understand. And Mr. Bones here to represent his client. How strong, how long would it, would it take to, for, to to finish the foreclosure process? I mean, estimate, I know they can, assuming they delay in a worst case scenario. Uh, probably up to a year. Up to a year? Yeah. But and how strong is our case? It's as strong as any other foreclosure okay. case, but we have some bankruptcy hoops we may have to jump through between now and then, and it's a pending bankruptcy in the Southern District of Florida in Miami. Okay. So I would either have to go down there or we'd have to hire a special bankruptcy counsel to do some things down there. Well, I assume legal fees to fight out for a year? Uh, if you have to hire bankruptcy counsel down there, you could easily run up another ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 in legal fees, which you wouldn't get back. Right. Uh, you would get it back technically in the judgment, but you just get the same piece of property right. you're going to get now. Okay. Uh, he's not personally liable because he's got his bankruptcy pending. Okay. I'm fine with it. I, uh, I think it's a fair proposal based on the circumstances and 
makes sense to bring it to closure and clean up the blight. And my, my only um, disdain, distaste for this whole ordeal is that someone who has money can file bankruptcy. They got old city $328,000 code enforcement liens, and a poor person who has a code enforcement lien, we just take their property. So that, that's, this guy, person lives in Boca Raton, so they don't get to see the ugly pink house. We get to see it. Code enforcement goes out. They code enforce it. We set a precedent. I think we're setting a bad precedent. And, you know, I, I, I agree. The thirty-five thousand. You know, I don't think giving their money back. Cause I think basically we're rewarding you for living in Boca Raton and being able to pay us nine hundred seventy-eight dollars in your bankruptcy. And, and I, I concur with the city attorney. It is the quickest way to do it. But I just think that we're setting a bad precedent. Because if, if I don't have enough money to hire an attorney or pay nine seven eight to for long a bankruptcy, basically I'm giving my money back. So in three years I get thirty five thousand. So when I pay the city, I get my money back. So when a poor person comes up who has three hundred thousand dollars code enforcement lien, we're gonna wreck them over the code and say you made the city look bad. We had to look at this eyesore and we take your property. First with money, they put us in court and we say we don't want to pay the legal fees, so we get thirty five thousand dollars back. And the only benefit we get is we get a piece of property on Main Street, but I just think it's a bad precedent for for the league's work. Um, I do agree with Fred. It's going to cost us money to, to fight it, so I don't suggest that, but I just think we're setting a bad precedent. I hope that moving forward, if somebody who comes to that podium who doesn't have a lawyer, who's not rich, we take the same um, stance that we be lenient as best we can, and, and we do what's best for the city um, at that time and for the, especially a citizen of Leesburg. Somebody who lives in Boca Raton, they don't come to Leesburg, but we're stuck looking at a, a eyesore for three years and they're paying money, so they get an attorney and we say give them their money back. So that's my distaste for this whole ordeal. That's all I have. Any, anybody got anything else from the public? Actually, I, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm against doing this. Um, I, <laughs> because I've been consistent not wanting right. to give relief to homeowners that don't do the code enforcement and we've been consistent on no we're going to foreclose and we're going to follow the process and now if you told me the and i asked about legal fees you said it was going to cost a hundred thousand dollars at some point there's a number we say it you know let, let's let's not not uh, cut up our, our nose about our face but we're going to spend the same amount of money or maybe even a little bit less it's going to take us a year we're still going to get the house so i'm, I'm for me i just want to go through the foreclosure process I can agree with the two commissioners. I, I don't want to start a precedence of this either, but I would like to be done and over with it. Because if it does start to run into more and more money, and it sounds like he can play the legal game, you know. Um, but I agree with you, you know. We can't have two different judgments depending on who the people are coming through here. And we started this to clean up the city. How did the liens get so big? I mean, it's not a great looking building, but I, I there's a lot more blight in this town than this building. If, if you, I'll is, it, is it structural? I'll answer the, the commissioner's question. Um, because I, I disagree where the commission's going on this, and, and I've told you in the past, and, and I respect your opinion, where, however you do this, and, and I'll manage as directed. The code fines are structural, window issues, these type of things. They start building up because if you don't affect the efficiencies, you don't fix the windows, you go to the special magistrate, the meter's running. You get a fine per day, every day, that these things are fixed. And these things aren't things that the city has the authority to go and abate. We have the authority to go in and take a, a, a junk car off your property or cut your grass but we don't have the authority to go in and fix your windows or fix doors and these type of things. Although we have boarded up from time to time, which we may have done, and that, that's why the property's in disrepair. In my opinion, the, the, the opinion on these liens is to encourage construction and compliance, not to, to build up, you know, not to build up liens to extract value out of a dilapidated property. And I think if the commission continues to go down this path, we'll struggle with cleaning up the community. The other side of the equation is you're being- So which path? The path right. of let's, let's take, the, the punitive path of let's take fine and, and lean value over compliance. We have opportunity here to rid the community of a blight. But we're not getting compliance. You are not getting compliance but you are ridding the problem. Because in this case, the code enforcement situation is not working. The, the, the fines and the fees aren't piling up to work as a stick to get compliance. 
because this person is happy to give us $900 a month and not address the fines. So this is going to continue. You can speak for your client. So in my opinion, this is going to continue until they address their code enforcement fines, which will force us to get with Fred to do a foreclosure. And so that I don't see that that process is beneficial to the city. I see that we can end this. We can rid the, the, the community of a blight and have a, a better community outcome. I think the mayor puts in some so, the, the other socioeconomic issues in there that makes this more complex. But I think, and my recommendation will be, is if you can get a win-win situation for the property owner <coughs> and the city that gets compliance, I think you put that above the value of whatever lien you have on it. That's just my humble opinion. What is the value? I, mean, I mean, think there's $328,000 of liens. Yeah, the, uh, like the, 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 assess, the assessed value on it is 100000 was it um, appraised in bankruptcy? Uh, no, this the bankruptcy was three years, four okay. years well, you, ago. You know where I'm going so, with that. I'm just trying to understand yeah. what's worth to the city. I didn't know yeah, if there was yeah. an appraisal out there. Yeah, it's a 2,600 square foot you know, building on Main Street that needs we're some, gonna, need some repairs. So. Right, we're we're going to demolish it. So really, it's what's, what is the land worth? Yes. But, but man, I, 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 I kind of disagree with the city manager. I think the only reason we're here is because of code enforcement. If there was no code enforcement action, it would probably be a for sale sign up to the highest investor who will come to Leesburg and, and, and invest it. So I think the code enforcement, the $328,896.52, is what got them to hire an attorney to come and talk to us and make a deal. I don't think they're making a deal for $35,000 because they're tired of this ugly pink house on Main Street. So I'm sure they would have been trying to flip it three years ago we did a foreclosure. I think that's what started the whole bankruptcy to get us to this point. Um, yeah, the, the, it's curious trying to figure out the motivations of the owner because the last time around we went through the whole foreclosure and rather than spend his money to fix the place, he decided to spend it on legal fees to file bankruptcy and then pay us 900 and something dollars a month since then and still hasn't done anything on the property and really hasn't expressed any painted, desire to do that. It was painted Somebody a few painted. years ago. Yeah, they painted it, but I mean, yeah, it didn't paint it a particularly attractive color, but it's painted. I think from what I knew the last time, he wanted to keep the place. It had some sort of sentimental value to him. I don't know what yeah, I think it is. I remember you. I think I remember you saying that. Fred. And uh, since then, he's just hung on to it, but not yeah. done anything. And a complicating factor is his sister is a co-owner. She's not bankrupt, uh, and she's making the decisions now. I understand he's got some severe health problems and really can't do that. So uh, I don't but know she what could we're file dealing bankruptcy with. Bankruptcy on us and stall us even more. Yeah, she could file her own and stop it again. She's not uh, uh, Robert Long, um, and. Uh, here for the, the owners of the property and she she's not going to file bankruptcy so there, there's um and and uh mayor I, I can't speak to how much money they have but um I, I don't think necessarily because they live down there that they have money and there's no indication that i have that they that they have money other than that i can tell you this that um and a little bit of more background that i got from from miss israel is that she she said that um her, while her brother's the one that filed the bankruptcy, she's the one that makes the bankruptcy payments, and it's actually the payment she makes to the bankruptcy court is about eleven hundred dollars a month, and and so um, so they um, contacted me because of the of the foreclosure, and so as I started talking with her about it, and I and and just about the property, and we just discussed maybe we can just transfer, uh, see if the city would take it, and she essentially said, you mean I don't have to keep making this payment to the bankruptcy court because. I was going to have to go um, get a job, and this is a senior citizen, and her brother's a senior citizen as well. And this is honestly, it's just nonsensical what they've what they've done because they probably could have taken the thirty-five thousand dollars that they paid over the last three or four years and taken care of the problems that were there on the building. So I don't think it was anything out of spite on their part or to you know thumb their nose at the the the, the city or anything like that. I think this is a situation where two people. Um, one's invalid, he's got severe Parkinson's disease, and then a sister that's kind of taking care of him and, um, and managing things, and she's making the payment to the bankruptcy court, and there's, I think there's some sentimental <coughs> reasons involved, and they're trying to save the property, and they just didn't deal with it. Now, she expressed to me that, and there's no excuse, but she expressed to me that when she got the notice this, on this last code enforcement case, um, she just didn't hear anything for a while, and she wrongfully assumed that somehow everything was okay with the property and that is one of the little issues legally is is that 
there's, there's one notice that says you're in violation, you have so much time to, re, to come into compliance, and if you don't, then there'll be a fine. But there's no second order that says you didn't come into compliance and so the fine has started. And, and that's a legal issue for Fred and attorneys in, in, a, in, a, for, in a foreclosure. So, so she never got anything extra and, and her, she just thought it was taken care of and kept making these payments. And so here we are, are today and she's put a lot of money into it and essentially just asking if, if that money is paid back to her in full or in part you know, you know, um, and, uh, and she'll deed the property over. It, that ties into the bankruptcy issue because right now, even though this is a subsequent foreclosure case, the prior foreclosure case put the property into bankruptcy, and so there's actually a bankruptcy stay that says you can't, you know, th nothing can be done to affect the, the property and this, um, this owner without getting permission from the bankruptcy court. Um, so, so what we had discussed was is that if we if we do this and reach an agreement, she's just stop, going to stop making the payments on the bankruptcy and the case will get dismissed. That might take 30 to 45 days for it to get dismissed and then they'll be free to just transfer the, um, transfer the property to the city. So that's, that's, that's kind of it in a, in a nutshell of what happened. It's nonsensical in a way when you think about somebody paid $35,000 and they could have just gone out there and put windows in the building. I think that's the major issue. And then there were a couple of smaller ones and, and what happened is, is she was getting zapped for hundred dollars a day for um, for each one of those three things, and so that's how it added up um, that way. So, um. well, for me, um, I mean, I have no problem trying to help her out, and if they want to just deed the property over, but I, I, I'm not in favor in returning the thirty-five thousand. I mean, we're going to spend money for demolition and and to keep consistency over what we've been doing. Now to help, I mean, they would be getting out of it, you know, they'd be able to stop the payments and they're done. Um, but I, I can't, after the steps we've taken to this point, I, I wouldn't feel like we're being consistent if we gave the 35000 back. <clears throat> so. I would offer a counter offer. We're not going to give the $35,000 back, but we will take the house and cancel the code enforcement. So there's her 35000 with the bankruptcy court as well. But if we start doing this, and I, having listened to the other commissioners and the, and the uh, city manager, if we start doing this, then we're going to have others that are going to try this, mm -hmm. including one at the, almost the same location down at the end of Main Street who wants $350,000 to clear up that blight. So I, I am against it at this point after listening to everybody. Well, in theory, that's what's going to happen anyway, except well, she's going to keep making more payments until it's settled. That's right. Well, not necessarily. I mean, I, I do think there's a question about the effectiveness of the of the code enforcement order, and this is, again, an argument that'd be made to court, but there's an attorney general opinion that does say that it requires two code enforcement orders to impose the lien that could be foreclosed, and there's only one. And there's not the subsequent one that says that the, um, that the, the fine is now imposed and constitutes a lien against the property. Okay, so so if, it's, if that's thrown out, then you have to go back and start all over again. But, so, but, it, so. but she would still be making payments of $900 a month until that's on, pay, on, settled on, on, the, on the first one, right. Yeah, and how much money is that? She's only got, I think she's got maybe, I, I can't remember, she's almost into four <coughs> years into this thing, so she's yeah, got she another. just finished three years, I so think, three, to figure out. Okay, she's so got two more years. She's got two more years. So that's so. $24,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's so that, out. But that'd be worth it to, to pay that. So she's that far into the, the 35. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, you know, it's making it me worth it. But if she don't fix it, we just we're gonna end up yeah, in a she, big circle. She'll get the same have to fix it. It's a 2,600 square foot house, you know, there, and um, you know, if she was able to get, you know, $80, fix it up and get $80 a square foot. I mean, that's that, there's room in there to to do some work and. Well, if we're gonna demo it, I wouldn't think just new windows are gonna get it to the rentable state. Uh, and I've got to think that this code enforcement goes beyond this time. You know, for her to add up to three hundred and eighteen thousand, twenty-eight thousand dollars, it was going on before this time. And that, you know? and, and again, that brings into question the legitimacy of the fine itself because it does. She did not get a second one that said the 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 lien is imposed and constitutes a lien against your property. And so she she so she wrongfully assumed if if if. Mr. Morrison's correct. She wrongfully assumed that the, you know, everything was okay, 
and, and and I'm not saying that she was justified in that thinking, but that's you know that that is that is what happened, and so so they you know I have no indication that they they have money. It's just a, a situation where you know with some equity involved, considering the fact that they've they've paid the money, that there'd be some payment back, and and uh, you know they had asked for the thirty five thousand to be paid back if if there's something you know there's going to potentially be some other fees. Um, the easiest way for that for that case to be finished in bankruptcy is is for the case just to be dismissed by her stopping the payments altogether, um, and that won't require retaining any attorneys to, to do anything down there to do that, and and so. Yes, okay, sir. so so let, let let me pull back my my emotions and, and put my business at. Does the city need that property? Do we would want that property? I think that I think the city's interest in this property is to clean your corridor. So to answer that question, I would say yes, we need it. I don't think it's going to be a house. If it were fixed up, they want to buy it, make it a make it a boutique or so or sell business. <laughs> So you see us keeping it, and I think I heard Do I, keeping it? No, 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 no. <laughs> they no, they no, no, no. no. The, the, question, the question was, do we need the house? Or the question was, do we need the property? Yeah. Okay, I would answer that yes. The, it would be good to have the property because you would demolish the house, and we have an interest in that corner of the community. Just to sell it? The no, property? I would demolish the house. What are you going to the house? What are you going to property for? It can be used in the city. My position is that the city has an interest in this property. Okay. We would demolish the house, whether we use the property or put together our interest and sell a larger block on West Main okay. Street, we have interest. Mm -hmm. It has value to okay. us. That's the answer to the question. It's up to the collective wisdom of the commission as to whether you agree with me on whether it has value or do we need the property. Well, I guess where, where I advise I, that it does. And I guess where I was going with it, we get rid of this code enforcement issue and just say this house is for sale for $35,000. We're going to get it, demolish it. We're going to buy a lot beside it. We're going to package two lots together and, and, and create a business. So I think for me, if we had a vision to say that's what we're going to do, because the house is for sale for 35000 and we just go out outright and buy for $35,000. Um, lot behind it, we own that. We get a lot beside. Now we got a half acre on Main Street that's worth now two hundred fifty thousand dollars. We packed together, and we submitted um, to our economic development director. And we try to get the business downtown. And so, to me, that that makes me think. Okay, this may be something we could do if we had an idea on. That's the direction that. I said leader. I, you know, hey, you can throw that one back at me and say we don't have ideas. You have a beautiful corridor that represents this community, and you're in the midst of doing a downtown master plan where we are organizing our priorities. I am sure through the public input, through our own visions, and through that master plan, we will come up with a good concept. For the dollars that we're talking, for the ability to solve a, a blight, which mm -hmm. another commissioner always complains about on that very corner. That's right. And here is opportunity to fix that and make a win-win for everybody. Here we go. But if, if we're gonna if we have specific issues on why this doesn't agree with us politically, whether it's a financial issue or whether it's a social issue. That's your all. Well, well, for me, my well, for well, me, Mr. But, Mayor, but the social my recommendation is, is that this is a worthy project, and 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 I respect I respect Commissioner Roebuck's opinion on the f financial issues. I respect yours on the social issues, but and I know this is a tough one. Well, it's not really tough for me. I think whoever comes up, somebody's come to the podium. You got to have a rationale why you did what you did. To say our rationale is we wanted it, and it was a three hundred twenty-eight thousand dollar code enforcement violation. That doesn't rationalize for me. The rationality, the city needed, we got a master plan, we got plans for this property. So when somebody else comes up there who looks like me, who don't have any money for an attorney, and we say, no, you got a $9,000 code enforcement lien, and we're gonna take your house, and why do you take the other guy's house? Where's the rationale? So to me, we got this is the rationale, what you just said, should have been the rationale for why we're doing what we're doing. We got a downtown master plan, we need the property, we think we can piece some stuff together, that's the rationale. But just to say we're doing it because we wanna do it, doesn't make sense to me. And, and when somebody else comes up, we got better to tell them no and why we're saying no, not just because of what we've always done, we've been consistent. What is the here to make me break the consistency doesn't make sense. That, that's, that's why I asked the question, does the city need or want this property? Because if, for me, if it's for $35,000 without the code enforcement, we probably all say let's buy it. But I think when we start setting the precedent, we got to have a reason why we're breaking our precedent. 
that was my conversation. The social economic issue, I think the financial issues, what, what people are bringing the issues up because we've had these discussions year after year. So I think it's nothing against you. I, I, I'm glad you brought it to the commission because that's what we need to do because if somebody else gets it, they're going to sell it for $100,000. So then we're going to look a bunch of like it is. We now we're spending 65000 additional dollars. That's why I said let's take the emotions out and say from the business standpoint, does the city of Leesburg want 1315 for 35000 plus demo costs? That, that was kind of that was kind of my rationale behind asking that question. And so it agreed that if it was for sale for thirty five thousand dollars and code enforcement wasn't involved, right. I would be in favor of buying it. I guess where I, I, I'm, I struggle with using code enforcement to accomplish kind of bringing that in because. Then I'm going to feel bad when I tell the guy who lives in his house is in a piece of property the city would never want. Right. Well, I can't help you out because you don't live in the right area that I want your property. And that's why, I, even though I, that I, I fully understand, but why I'm against it is that I just, even though I think this is probably a good deal for the city, for me, it's more important if I'm going to take, because I'm going to take a hard line in the future on code enforcement that I'm going to take a hard line here even when the particular deal is probably good for the city. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I respect and appreciate everybody's comments. Um, I guess you know, most people know I'm a former banker and you know, I've been through this scenario so many times. I think it does come down to economics versus emotions. I'm, you know, there's a lot of issues here. I think economically it makes sense to get this behind us. You know, the legal fees uh, Probably, you know, the analysis right on legal fees alone probably justifies this deal, and then we're cleaning up the blight. Um, I do struggle with the other part. Um, you know, I brought a, some gentlemen here you know, a year ago, and I was very upset. I thought they were mistreated, and uh, and uh, but that's another issue. You know, it doesn't matter uh, now. Um, so you know, we are inconsistent. I don't know what the answer is there. You know, maybe one idea is make the code enforcement liens more relative to. You know, more reasonable, you know, and take a hard stance on, but make them reasonable. And I think they're kind of inflated. Yeah, you know, I know they're, I know the logic to it, but you know, make them a real number. Because, like for example, the deal I brought in here, you know, what I said, you know, standing in Bob's position was, what did it cost the city? Yeah, you know, I think I had liens of one hundred and sixty thousand dollars on a fifty thousand dollar property. Right. And you know what I what I kept saying is, you know, what's the city have into it? You know, is it ten? Because the city deserves to get their money back. So I was trying to argue, you know, if you got ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars worth of manpower, working, you know take that and go the other way. So it's a tough issue. Uh, in summary, I'll support it. Yeah, I'm the bad guy, I'll support it. Because <laughs> I'll be tough on the next one, Look, we, on code enforcement. Like it, 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 it's a tough one, it's it a, tough a tough one, one. it's a tough one. But Commissioner I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Mayor, Commissioner, I mean, you got anything? On, I mean, to the extent ahead, that there was three votes to give them thirty-five thousand, I mean, I don't want to take money out of my client's pocket, but, but you know, if, if there's, if this is something that you're, that you're struggling with and you, and the, you know, it's just, uh, there's a better number other than just say, hey, I'll work a deal with you, I'll take wave the fine, I'll take your house. <laughs> but, to, um, but, you know, but something uh, reasonable, I take it back to them to, uh, you know, to, to consider if that makes it easier for the, for the commission to, to reach a consensus and do something. And I mean, the people pay, and I understand what you're saying, Mayor, but you know, um, having a, a, some sort of a vision with the, that quarter there, but uh, the people paid $35,000 to the, to the city. And, um, Probably foolishly, but that's uh, but that's that is what they did. So, well, they made a bad decision. I think every story I've heard on code enforcement is a bad decision by the owner. I never. I don't think I've ever heard one where somebody had, was actually paying the city money okay, while right. their property was going yeah. through foreclosure. And, and so. they all argue they didn't get notice. We all know. Yeah, that. yeah, that's, right. That's, well, we just we're gonna start doing a deal like we do at the dealership. We mail you out, and we want you to buy a car every week. We're gonna start mailing out. We're coming to get your house every week. I mean, how many notices do you really need to know that you're out of compliance? I think that's the dumbest argument that I've ever heard to look at your dilapidated house. Code enforcement's made three trips out there. You finally get a notice that you're going to be considered a violation and start racking up fines and then come in here with legal gargan that we're not doing it justice. So anyway, that's, that's my emotion. So it just frustrates me that we're here every single time. And to your point, I don't appreciate your recommendation, and I don't care what color their skin was. I mean, that is never ever my determining factor and I don't appreciate that but what I want to point out is for me yes they spent the money they could spend 24,000 more 
and then 24,000 more to fix it up. However, I don't think they'll spend 50,000 to fix it up. So I think for me, it's more of, you know, would I be opened up to maybe some type of compromise? Because in the long run, whether we lose the second one and they pay the 24,000 off, they're not going to fix it up, so we're going to start a third one in a year from now, two years. We're really honestly probably going to be right back here because they probably don't have 50000 just to dump in it. So we are deserving of something back because you know if we demolition it, we're going to have a cost in that, and, and we're obviously hoping to probably utilize that with some of the other vacancies in that area and, and try to help the gateway. So, you know, for me, um, you know, $35,000, if you cut that in half, um, give them 18 grand. If they would want to do it for 18 grand, that lets us recoup some of our fees between code enforcement coming out there, Fred, and all that. Um, then you could get a yes from me. What, how much did we give um, the, the, the deal that you brought before you were on the commission? You gave them some <laughs> amount right. over you know, what the bank owed. I know it well. It, it, it was, I, they, the was. I think they were going to walk away with about 80 grand. The sale was. The sale was the, 84. We, the city took 80 and they split. Four, these gentlemen split $4,000. $4,000. Two brothers. Okay, so that's oh, I thought they had they four. Got, they got four. Are they mama? I house? thought they had. Yeah, they walked away they with four grand. Yeah, yeah. four thousand. That was a hard vote, and I yeah. voted to do that, so I'm going to be consistent. Yeah. Just for your information, demolition we estimate around fifteen thousand. Fifteen. Well, I think we need to come. It sounds like we could get there on a reduced number, whatever it is. I was going to throw 25 out. Jay said 18. I mean, I'll support either one of them. I, I would clearly support a reduced if that'll win some votes. You got mine at 18. Okay. You got his at four. But remember that we get back Well, I thought those other, uh, I thought those other two gentlemen were more deserving of a break than this particular case on the merits. So I get I'm two. Not get, uh, so I'm not going to go anymore. I feel well, the only reason I even doing this is because they have actually paid. I understand. If they hadn't paid, I wouldn't come off of it a dime. That is but true. they have paid, so. I, you know. I suppose that is a good point that they have paid some Mark that down as two good points you've said I had <laughs> since we've been working together. <laughs> there was one two years ago. Okay. <laughs> so do we have a third vote at 18? Well, do you need a motion first? Oh, no. I can, moved you, to, uh, well, you have to negotiate. We really don't do a motion. You move to well, amend the resolution. You need to amend yeah. the resolution. To 18. Make a motion to amend the resolution to 18 and okay. then approve it. And then vote on it, and then for that to happen, Mr. Bones got to take that back to his clients, and they got to sign it. And then it would come back to us. No, nope, then it would be done. Okay, so I make a motion to amend it to eighteen thousand. I'll suck the cash by. A discussion from the commission, from the public. Roll call. Commissioner Dennison. Yes. Commissioner Peterson. Yes. Commissioner Roebuck. Yes. Commissioner Hurley? I'm going to vote no now. <laughs> yes. Mayor Christian? Um, no. <coughs> I need to vote on the main motion. Uh, I, I, I think you amended. did it. You had two votes there, didn't you? I don't think you, you voted, voted to amend it. That, that was to amend it. That was to amend it. Uh-uh. You do your yes, job, I'm going to do my job. <laughs> <laughs> Any, any, any discussion, any discussion on the main motion? <laughs> right, roll call, please. Commissioner Peterson. So the main motion is this right here. Yeah. To yes. approve as amended. Eight, yeah. no. 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 It's amended to 18,000. Yeah. You got to approve this one to get 18. I'm I'm yes on 18. I'm no on 35. <laughs> yeah, there's no 35 yes. gone. So okay. gone. You got okay. to approve it okay. and get the 18 okay. through. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Roebuck? No. Commissioner Hurley? Yes. Commissioner Dennison? Yes. Mayor Christian? No. All right, Mr. Bone. Thank you. Pleasure to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> see you in six months. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Rank something easier next time, man. Just come say hello, you know? I never make it easy. All right, the next item is item uh, 5D is the first reading of the ordinance. Someone like to introduce it. I'll introduce and ask me read by title only, please. <clears throat> An ordinance of the city of Leesburg, Florida, rezoning approximately 1.3 acres from R1 low density residential to M1 industrial for property generally located north of Montclair Road and east of Thomas Avenue as legally described in section 22 township 19 south range 24 east Lake County Florida and providing an effective date. 
Any discussion on this item? This item will lay over. Item 5E is the first reading. Would someone like to introduce it, please? I'll introduce it. It has to be read by title only, please. An ordinance of the City of Leesburg, Florida, amending the zoning on approximately 32 acres to allow for the addition of single family residential uses in a PUD planned unit development zoning for property generally located north of Sunnyside Drive, west of Fern Drive, and south of US Highway 441, as legally described in Section 30, Township 19 South, Range 25 East, Lake County, Florida, and providing an effective date. And a discussion on this item. I just want to point out, because someone told me that we were approving apartments in Sunnyside, and this is the one, so if it comes up, and just for the records, everyone hears, we're not doing that. This was an existing use of townhouses, and now we're allowing single-family homes. Wow. Word spread is quick. <laughs> and discussed from the public. <laughs> this item will also lay over uh, six information reports, financial reports of July 2019. Anything from the city manager, finance department? Okay, city attorney items. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you, sir. City manager items. I have three quick items for you this evening. First, uh, I want to inform you and kind of get a little bit of guidance on this, but um, we have found some mold in three of the four fire stations. Mm -hmm. Doing periodic maintenance. Uh, actually, we had a, a complaint um, at the Okahumka station, we went out and checked it. There was some leaking and we went and checked it, changed out filters. We found mold in that process. So we went in there and we've already started remediating the mold at Okahumka on our emergency procurement issues. We've spent probably about $22,000 to date. We're probably gonna spend somewhere around another 50 to get that fixed. Um, so, and we spent about eight grand on an engineer. So I'm about 80,000 to 100,000 in fix and mold at Okahumka. Um, the third, the second issue um, with when that popped up, we, we checked some other issues. So we've probably got about $10,000 of remediation to do at the main um, canal fire station and the airport uh, fire station has probably around 7,500 or so to do. So all in all, I'm probably around $115,000 expense. What I'd like to do is get this fixed mm -hmm. as quick as possible and then bring you guys back our emergency procurement um, documentation. If you guys say no, don't do that. What we'll have to do is we'll have to go bid it, bring it back, and the conditions will be there, exist there a little bit longer. It's not a huge number. Uh, part of the repair is to try to do some extra steps to keep it from reoccurring. We hope we can knock it out for that about that 115,000 number. If everybody's okay with that, I'll just proceed. Wasn't the as, new roof in Oklahoma supposed to take care of a lot of that a couple of years ago? Do you, we we the fixed the roof. <coughs> you never replaced it. You never really replaced the roof. And and I don't think it's it appears it's not a leak issue per se. It's a mold uh, issue. It's more of a condensation on HVAC lines than an attic. Okay. Uh, I would agree with doing uh, that. We can't have a fire under okay. working Where's on the mold? that. AC yeah. ducts. AC ducts. Um, so that, that was report number one. Um, number two is a, another uh, directional type of thing from the commission on the personnel committee. The FY20 budget ha had a couple of things in it. One was to bring back the tuition program. The other was to change some stuff around with some safety glasses and those type of things. What I'd like to do is just write those policies up and bring it directly to the commission unless you all want to have go through committee first. I believe the committee's made up of Commissioner Dennison, uh, Mayor Christian, um, myself, Melissa, and I think an employee. My recommendation to you would be to just to bring the updated <laughs> policies to you. Do you guys have a preference on that? It's fine with me. I'd like to see it before it comes to the commission, but it's fine with me. Okay. Sounds good to me. Oh, yeah. I'll, tr I'll try to... <laughs> No, I'm just saying, you want, well, you I'm want a meeting? You know, I don't need a meeting. I'm just like, well, we're having a committee for We're going to bypass committee. So I think if you just send it to Dennis and myself and Melissa, uh, we can look at it. If we got an issue, then I think we can call a meeting and we come to the commission. Right? Okay. Okay, that's how, that's how we'll go. Not that I want um, to meet with you, man. You know, <laughs> oh, come on. You know, I, I do everything you tell me anyway. Yeah, right. um, on, right, and then, that. and remember, too, just in the final word uh, is the budget. Um, our first budget workshop is this Thursday at 5, so we hit the, uh, the redevelopment budgets and then um, the main budget and the millage rate. So Thursday, don't forget, Thursday at 5. 5? Five? 5. Okay. And don't forget, Jay. 
I will not That'd be here. 30 minutes late, so you said that. You I know. Okay. Okay. Can you tell Pam to call us? Yes. I ain't a call us. We'll, we'll, get you, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get you a call. Yeah, by, you we'll get up. you a call by lunch on Thursday. But I won't call you. Uh, you okay. call me, I'll talk to you. Okay. But I still won't be here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, uh, public comment. It's, That's it's it, Alan? Uh, we got to see. Yes. Good. All right, public comment. This section reserved for members of the public to bring up matters of concern or opportunities for praise. Issues brought up will not be discussed in detail at this meeting. Issues will either be referred to proper staff or scheduled for consideration at a future city commission meeting. Comments are limited to three minutes, please. Yes, sir. Don Luckett. I noticed on this, this agenda, as you know, I've been coming to these meetings for many, many years. I notice on many, many of the purchase items, there's either a supplement, a change order, or an amendment. And we had quite a few of them tonight. And I'm wondering, are these not, the staff not preparing the bids correctly? Or are our vendors deliberately underbidding, knowing they can get rubber stamp supplements? I think uh, when this, these items come up, I think the commission should spend a little time uh, questioning staff on these. Why is this happening so often? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we didn't do that, though. We just extended the term of agreements tonight. Right. Just for, like, continuing services. Pardon? Which All we did is we, we extended the term for continuing services. Well, we didn't vote on any money. The, the agenda says amendment. Thank we God amended God. an agreement to extend the service, Don. Huh? We amended the agreement to extend the service. Well, all right, but it all right, so that's not a change order. All right, but it happens quite often. In your and opinion. I don't believe this commission questions it enough. No. And I, I think staff is very aware of your previous comments. So I think they've been doing a, a much better job at um, bidding things out. I think the commission is really aware of, of change orders. I know Commissioner Dennison brings it up quite often. So I, I think, we, Don, we are kind of pretty, pretty aware of it. Um, any other public comment? Okay, if not, roll call. Commissioner Dennison, uh, just two things. One, planning and zoning. I'd like to thank you for getting that information out regarding your meeting on number two road. And um, I'd like to see that happen more. When we have meetings with contractors and whatnot and, and developers, I would like to see what you had decided and why. I know that's in, the, in tonight's notes, but I still would like to see that. I think it was beneficial, okay? Because after all, we do support you as you support us, you know? And I don't want to approve all these things and then find out you were against it. All right. <laughs> and the second thing is Main Street. I had an opportunity Sunday to take a ride down Main Street. What is going on with all the empty stores? Mr. Economic Development. Do you want to? Is this, are these properties owned by a former one person? Yes. Who was it, backstabbed? Is this us? Mr. Frost? Yes. yes. These are Frost properties. Uh, Mr. Frost did come in, uh, pledged to do a lot of redevelopment. Uh, some of that's happened, some of that hasn't. Most of the empty stores are Mr. Frost. That's what I thought. Is my, is, does that cover it? Yes, sir. Do we have a plan to assist or help? tenants come in or are we just kind of letting the market you know we really don't have a market plan to assist in business development when it comes to that we you know we have the facade sign landscape program to try to help redevelopment and help improve your your facades um, there's not tax abatement credits for residential unless you're thinking of something else that 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 I'm not I mean three of his properties just got tenants in the last 30 days. Yeah, if you drive down Main so there's, there's, there's three a businesses lot of empty. There's, days. there's yeah. a few open and there's a few yeah. empty. And I would just point out though, that that sometimes is a good thing. Before we had 100% vacancy, but it was thrift shops and other stuff we don't want. If you look at successful downtowns, you will always see vacancies because they won't cut their rates just for anyone. And I don't disagree that we need more, but sometimes some vacancy, I think can be okay. And we have a third place opening up, Joni probably knows, right? That next to Brick and Barrel? Yes. 
Yeah. The main Main Street Cantina. Yeah. In the so. next couple of months. And one on Third Street. Would it help in the future if we don't sell all these properties to one person? Well, we don't without control who the owner sells the property to. We have no, no. No, I'm talking about without some planned agreement. How can we? Yeah, how I can we influence that? I don't agreement. know, but Leesburg downtown does not look good. I would say this gentleman. You know, I don't like the vacancies, but they're probably fairly normal. He did put a lot, invest a lot of money downtown. So I mean, I look at it as a positive. I mean, um, I mean, you look where we were two years ago. Got no, I understand. Got put a lot of money in our downtown. His, his lease rates are market, so I don't know what it is. So it's not like he's sitting here, you know, I mean, in my opinion, his, his asking rates are, are market. So it's not like he's you know, jacked up the prices. You know, he's the problem from that standpoint. Are we doing any advertising to let people know about Leesburg and the fact that there's availability on Main Street? Oh, absolutely. And where is that being done? Chamber, our website, um, the partnership, the just did a great downtown mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. association. Just did a great article about so, downtown. I, mean, I Lake think the world's yeah. Lakefront TV. <laughs> so it's out there. Okay. At least hundred thousand dollars. At least hundred. One hundred and forty <laughs> to be exact. No, yeah, one hundred and forty plus. Well, well, I still believe in downtown to be successful. You got to have people living downtown. So I still go back to the whole thing of uh, adjusting our, our code and our land development code so we can actually have people that will invest and build um, living units downtown. So I think until we do that, we're going to still have this transition back and forth because I think people are not going to drive to a destination unless there's more to do than just drink some beer and, and, and get some a glass of wine. So I think you got to get people that's actually living downtown. So. Joni Smalley from the Leesburg Partnership, oh, gonna jump who in. never says anything. Yeah, public comment, go Joni. We're gonna get, we gonna get your real range of whole agenda just for you. Go Joni. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on. Friday night was very busy downtown. There are some vacancies, but there there are people that are trying to bring some stuff down. But Friday night, if you would have driven down, it was people. There were people everywhere, and every day during lunch. Sunday is just one of those days that you don't well, see anything. Empty, you notice the vacancies windows a whole lot empty. more. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. it is being worked on. We are talking to them, too. So. Okay. Thank you, Joni. Thank you. Are you excited about downtown? I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Yeah. That was all, Commissioner. That's it. That Thank it. you. Commissioner Hurley? Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Roebuck? Um, the, uh, I, and I haven't had a chance to read yet the P&Z meetings, but did, the, the, did staff recommend against the number two road development? No, staff recommended for it. Okay. No, there right. was a, there was a the couple PNZ things that day. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, okay. I just wanted to. No, I just used that as an example because we got the information. Okay. I hadn't seen it yeah. yet. That's what I was asking. Okay. The commission recommended against the planning commission. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the, the one thing I did think about downtown, and, and maybe we can just encourage it. We can't ask it. But in a lot of downtowns where there's vacancies, the store owners like put stuff in the windows, and maybe we could could encourage that as opposed to boarded up windows. <laughs> so that would be nice. Um, but uh, yeah. That's better than what this looks like inside. Oh, okay. Um, so we can't we can't show anything inside. Maybe we could get some we could get some some scenes and put yeah. paint them on the wind windows. These burnt murals and put yeah. on the windows. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> Can Mr. Peterson. That's, I have just one question. I, we went through the finances. I meant to comment then, but um, and I spoke with Al about this when I first got on the commission. Having just gone through budget, you know, I just can't help but I look at these write-offs, and I think they're utility write-offs. Yeah. But I see this three hundred ninety-four thousand dollar number, which probably didn't mean much to me in January when I came on the commission. But after going through budget meetings, I, I see how I could use that three hundred ninety-four thousand. I know you and I discussed it, Al, and I just raised. That we're not going to solve it right now, but I just kind of get that out in the open. My understanding is that you know these are we used to have a tougher stance on I guess de utility deposits, and we softened up on that. Now we're losing money, and just yeah, I guess I'd rather have that money and spend it for the benefit of the city. So I just and 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 I wouldn't recommend that. And I was I was the one who recommended the softer stance on utility deposits. Um, the utility deposit stance, I think we increased that to the standard before I got here, kind of in the, in the start of the depression because utility deposits started, or utility payments started becoming more delinquent. So we toughened up on those payments with, I think, deposit standards that were outside the industry and made us a bad utility provider. 
my recommendation to you was bring those deposits back down, help the customer get hooked up, don't be an onus on the residential customer. And I, and I caution that when we did that, we would probably see our utility write-offs go up. And they have, probably to the tune of about $100,000 and $150,000 a year. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're spending $150,000 a year across all the utilities, water, sewer, electric, gas, to be an easier provider, to be more customer friendly. I think that has significant value. I think if you go back to the old days where the commission was at the time, your phones were off the hook with, I can't believe how hard it is to hook up to this utility, what you're requiring, a $500 deposit, that's crazy. Um, and, and you got that complaint from your businesses too. Mm -hmm. So we softened up there a little bit, and we, and we have. We've seen those utility write-offs go up, but they're still well within an acceptable standard. Um, we're going to have that write-off every year. And if those numbers creep up significantly more than that, I'll come back to, and talk. But, also, but, but at that will, number, I just don't think. Help us, too, because we were cutting off, taking too long to cut off, too. So yeah. that well, was you, another so thing. So basically, you you're looking, if you cut out, to, so let's put it in this perspective, of about $120 million of utility revenue across the city, you're writing off about 300000 a year. And this says three ninety four. Four hundred. Okay. Well, I'm not being smart. Uh, no, I know, but I don't. And I'm I realize percentage-wise, it's a small think number. That number. Like I said, I was able to look the other way until we went through budget, and we're, you know, we want a hundred for this, and we wanted, you know, one hundred seventy-five for the fire truck or, or fireman, and you know, we went through all these numbers, and I go, man, I could use that three hundred ninety-four. Well, you see, you could have. I'm yeah. sorry. You could have because it would just yeah, go to lower rates. Yeah. Oh, it's right, Dan. All right. Well, we could yeah, use that. I don't disagree with the point. We could, just, we could yeah. take half the lower rates and half the... Uh, <laughs> oh, no. You sound like Jay, no. I did not take half of it. Okay, I made my point. I, I didn't mean to beat it to death. Um, it, it jumped out at me after budget. Yeah. Can I add something to that? Yeah. One thing that would be helpful for me when looking at that number, because I can get help, I, is we used to get a breakdown of that commercial versus residential, right. and now we only get the number commercial versus number residential. Because I know in some years when I'd look at it in the past, you'd say, okay, well, 400000 well, 200000 of it is a big shopping center and not a business, and what right. could we do? Right. Um, yeah. But I have no idea. What I'll, I'll get you a breakdown of that. that and, we, and when you asked that question before, I want to say Walmart, I don't, I don't, I shouldn't speculate. There was one company in particular that was like seventy grand. of that. It was Winn Dixie. That was Winn Dixie. That, yeah. yeah. When they went out of business, yeah. I had the W right. <laughs> and, and, and I'll just end with this one. Yeah, maybe there's a compromise. Maybe we manage those deposits up a little bit. I'm not trying to be unfriendly, but it just seems like a lot of money to me. And I, and that Dan wants to give back and rebate, and I just want to take half of it to spend. And, and, and it, it has been since we've been. I've been on the commission. It's been like Al said, the deposit was two and a half. I mean, I, I opened a business. I think the daycare was my deposit was two thousand one hundred dollars. Uh, people get a house and they say, well, we're going to go buy your last tenant. Well, if your last tenant had four kids and here you got the single parent, the, the average light bill is 500, so you t two and a half. So you're paying a thousand dollars to turn lights on at a, somebody else's who had them. So I think when he changed the deposit, it, it really helped out. The, the guy that's honest goes in 250 as opposed to somebody getting hit for a thousand dollar deposit. Didn't we put some in place too that after so many months, or a year or something, they got a portion of it back. You get all of it back. Yeah, of it back it, yeah. Our deposit for uh, residential is only 250 bucks, and you get that back. And the other thing we did too in this is, I, a, I think you made your customers happy. B, I think you helped your utility. And C, you helped your customer service agents. Okay, you did tell me okay that because we we had this before. We had this yellow, green, red yeah, credit credit policy on how much your deposit was. And your customer service representatives were pulling their hair out, A, trying to explain this, and then B, defending themselves from the fruit that got thrown at them when they were trying to explain so, it. So, so you, I, excuse me, so, I have to go. So I think you've got a good system. I think our numbers, if, if we did the math right, you're looking at 0.3% over all your utility funds. So it, I know in, in big terms it's, it's money, but... You're not going to save a much by going back to the old way. Okay, I keep saying my last comment. Are we too, could we turn it off quicker? I know that sounds insens insensitive, but are we leaving people's power on too long after they quit paying? I don't think so. I thought you adjusted that. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think we have that issue. I'll look into that, but I, I, don't, I don't think I we have that, that issue. <clears throat> That's all I have.
Sure. I'll be a geese on my time, right? <laughs> I I have not, I'm sure I could go on if you wanted me to. I have nothing. I have nothing tonight, <laughs> y'all. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'm gonna give you my time, man. You got my <laughs>